Tech family, I have an incredibly special laptop with me today, one that I feel is the biggest game changer of any laptop I've reviewed on this channel. With me is the new Lenovo IdeaPad 5 15 inch with a new Ryzen 4 500 U CPU. I'm gonna show you that not only is the CPU in this laptop incredible, but at 650 US dollars, this entire laptop is an evolutionary step forward, pushing the budget category to a point that it has never been before. I mean, heck, I'm gonna show you how this laptop trades blows with the far more expensive version of the Dell XPS 9300 with the i7 CPU and the new MacBook Air with the i5 CPU. I'm Josh and I buy and review a lot of laptops and talk tech from the perspective of what it's like to actually own and use these devices. My reviews are generally extremely tough on manufacturers as I pick up lots of niggling issues that you'll find if you are an everyday user of these devices. I'm gonna warn you up front, this review is going to be surprisingly positive, and if at the end of the video you like what you watched, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up. It shows your appreciation for the incredible amount of time that went into making it. Let's cover performance first. This laptop includes the brand new Ryzen 4000 series CPU, specifically the Ryzen 5 4500U. It's a six core, six thread CPU with a base clock of 2.3 gigahertz and a single core max of four gigahertz. This is an unusual CPU configuration as you would normally see double the threads as cores, something like a four core, eight thread CPU. Quick primer on cores and threads. The more cores a CPU has, the more tasks the CPU can process at the same time. Having more threads than cores, like many CPUs do, is a way for the CPU to pretend to the operating system that it can do more things at the same time than it actually can. The additional threads tasks are simply scheduled to be completed after the ones currently executing. This helps maximize performance by ensuring tasks are always ready to be executed by the cores. Funnily enough, all major operating systems do a similar thing anyway. So today we are going to see how this unusual six core, six thread processor stacks up against very common Intel CPUs with four cores and eight threads. Lenovo's Vantage software allows you to use two performance modes, the default intelligent cooling and extreme performance. We're gonna look at both of them. Here are my benchmark results for the Ryzen 4500U versus the Intel i7 1065G7 in the new Dell XPS 9300, the Intel i5 1030NG7 in the MacBook Air, and the i5 82500U in the older Dell XPS 9370 from 2018. What you'll see straight away is the Ryzen 4500U is very close to the Dell XPS 9300 in Geekbench, but substantially better in Cinebench R20 due to the two extra physical cores. It completely annihilates the MacBook Air in multi-core and destroys the older Dell XPS with the 8th gen Intel CPU. Please keep in mind the MacBook Air does have a low TDP Y-series processor, but more on that in a sec. When we look at temperatures that you would actually feel when the laptop's running under load, the Ryzen 4500U in this Lenovo IdeaPad 5 chassis is about 20 degrees Celsius cooler than the Dell XPS 9300 on the keyboard deck and 10 to 15 degrees cooler on the back of the laptop. Yes, it is in a larger 15 inch chassis than the Dell, but that is still a monstrous difference in the way the laptop will actually feel when you're using it. The IdeaPad feels comfortably cold to the touch. The Dell XPS feels uncomfortably warm to the touch. The MacBook Air runs cooler to the touch than the Dell XPS but can't touch the IdeaPad. Looking into the internals, the 4500U CPU in the IdeaPad running on the default intelligent cooling mode initially draws 23 watts of power, but then after a while drops to 19 watts. Its clock speed stabilizes at about 3.2 gigahertz all core, and the CPU temperatures are well in check at 64 Celsius. Once we change the mode to extreme performance, the TDP jumps up to 42 watts initially and 37 watts eventually. The CPU now runs at 3.7 gigahertz all core, but the CPU temps are much higher at 97 Celsius. Although this runs hotter on the cores, it is nice to have the option to use this mode anyway. Comparing the Ryzen 4500U CPU running in the default performance mode to the Intel CPUs in the Dell XPS and MacBook Air, you can see that AMD destroys Intel here. The Ryzen 4500U CPU runs far cooler and performs far better than the Intel competitors. For gaming, I compared this laptop's integrated GPU with the new G7 Intel Iris Plus graphics in the Dell XPS 9300. In Firestrike, the Ryzen CPU was in striking distance of the new Intel GPU. The same results played out in the popular esports title League of Legends. On the XPS 9300, I was able to get a comfortable 75 FPS at 1920 by 1200 resolution on medium settings in complex parts of the game. On the Ryzen 4500U, I was also hitting the same 75 FPS, but at a slightly lower 1920 by 1080 resolution. Overall, 
both laptops were very playable on this esports title. Let's take a pause here. The fact that this laptop performed mostly on par and sometimes even beat a laptop that costs three times as much is an incredible feat. But the good news doesn't stop with the CPU. Let's get into the display. Displays are normally where budget laptop manufacturers cut costs, frequently placing dim, low resolution, washed out TN panels in laptops in this price range. Heck, check out Notebook Check's review of the Lenovo Flex 5 15 inch laptop from 2018. The panel in that laptop has an average brightness of just 185 nits. That is terrible and going to be extremely hard to see in a daylit room. Take a watch of my video on the best budget laptops for more on this, link in the description below. Well, the good news here is this panel is pretty decent overall and great in this price range. It's a matte IPS panel with a good resolution of 1920 by 1080 and excellent 350 nits of brightness and a good 960 to 1 contrast ratio. The screen being matte rather than glossy means that it works very well in bright environments as there are no reflections shown. The only downside of this screen is its color accuracy. I was able to get 64% of sRGB and 48% of Adobe RGB. Here it is compared to the much more expensive MacBook Air and Dell XPS's displays. You'll see that other than color accuracy, it fares quite well. At the end of the day, what this means is this laptop is fine for office applications, coding and light gaming, but you won't want to do photo or video editing on it as the colors aren't accurate enough. But for the price range, you will not get a better display. By the way, the display is also a touchscreen, which is really rare on a matte display. And lastly, on my unit there was no dead pixels and backlight bleed was extremely minimal, bordering on non-existent. The keyboard is great, it has excellent key travel, the keys have a satisfying click to them and there is minimal keyboard flex. In fact, it has the best feeling keyboard of any laptop I have in the house and I'm including the new Dell XPS 9300, the MacBook Air and Aero 17 in that. The keyboard layout is as expected which is good and it offers two levels of backlighting. The trackpad is an accurate Windows Precision one. If MacBooks have a 10 out of 10 trackpad, I'd give the new Dell XPS 9 out of 10 and this one an 8 out of 10. The chassis looks good and is well constructed which is rare for a non-metal laptop. That being said, it's definitely not as stunning as the new Dell XPS or the MacBook Air. The bezels are small around the display which makes it look modern. There is a tiny bit of flex but honestly it's not bad. There are also no sharp corners and it's very lightweight for a 15 inch laptop at 3.7 pounds. This makes it incredibly comfortable to use on the lap. My unit came with 8GB of RAM running in dual channel mode at 3200MHz which is great at this price range. The SSD it comes with is a 512GB drive from Sky Hynix with adequate speeds. It's definitely not as fast as the fastest SSDs available but it's fast enough. To be honest, the fact you have a 512GB SSD in a laptop at this price range is a miracle regardless. Looking inside the laptop you can see one very large fan with two heat pipes. The SSD and network card are replaceable which is great and there is a spot for an additional 2.5 inch drive. The RAM does not seem to be replaceable so ensure you get enough when you buy it. The fan on this laptop seems always on when plugged in. The only time I could get it to turn off was when I unplugged the machine. That being said, it isn't overly noisy when doing light tasks, but you still will hear it when sitting close to the laptop in a silent room. The keyboard deck remained very cool to the touch throughout my use of the laptop. The only time it got a little warm was when I was playing League of Legends. When doing something like this, the fan does get quite loud, but it isn't as loud as a standard gaming laptop. My unit had no coil wine, by the way. The sound quality is good and it gets quite loud. The speakers are upward firing placed above the keyboard which is great as it avoids sound being muffled if you're using the laptop on your lap. It also avoids the problem some laptops have when keys make a rattling sound if the speakers are placed below them like on the Surface Laptop 3. Overall, the sound quality is good, but it isn't as good as the MacBook Air, which has a fuller sound to it with more bass. The port situation is pretty good. It has a USB-C port, HDMI 1.4, headphone mic combo jack, two USB Type-A ports, and a full-size SD card reader. It's not the fastest SD card reader, but at least it has one. All the USB ports are the slower 3.1 Gen 1 though. It comes with a barrel pin charger, but the laptop does support USB-C charging, which is excellent as USB-C chargers are easier and cheaper to obtain. So you can buy a second to leave in another location so you don't always have to carry the charger with you. My only nit is that both charging capable ports are on the left side of the laptop, which means you will have to run the power cable along the back if your wall outlet is on the right side. Also, for some reason, the charger's cable length is very short, but then again, so are the ones that come with MacBooks these days. Battery life is decent. It has a 57 watt battery. I was able to comfortably get five to six hours with brightness turned down a notch. Depending on your use, you should be able to get more if you dim the screen. 
the webcam is usable, it's placed in the right location, but the quality isn't great. It also has a physical privacy filter, which is good. The laptop has a fingerprint reader on top of the power button and it works well. Better than the one on my $3,000 plus Aero 17. The only bloatware it came with was McAfee, but that can be easily uninstalled. The laptop was very stable and never crashed once while I used it. I also like that it's a Lenovo and you can easily upgrade the warranty support, add accident protection, and in many places receive next business day on-site support. Lastly, the price. It is outright ridiculous at $650. US This leads me to my conclusion. This laptop just really smacks down other laptops, especially when it comes to getting the basics right. How can the Razer Blade 15 Advance, which cost almost four times the price, have a keyboard that feels worse and speakers that don't get as loud? How can the Aero 17, which costs five times as much, have a worse trackpad and fingerprint reader? How can the Surface Laptop 3, that costs double as much as this laptop, have rattling audio? Why is it acceptable for the Dell XPS 9300, which costs three times as much to get almost 20 degrees Celsius hotter to the touch when under load? And how can the Apple MacBook Air, which costs twice as much, have far worse performance? I think you're getting the point. This laptop is an evolutionary leap forward for the budget category, and it's not just because of the new Ryzen processor inside. The entire laptop is polished and usable. The only real downside is the inaccurate colors of the display, but hopefully Lenovo starts offering it with different panel options or adding the CPU to their other laptops. This really does beg the question, why are we spending so much money on premium laptops? Lenovo, you should feel proud, and to my viewers who are looking for a cheap budget laptop, go buy this before it sells out. If you like this video, make sure to smash that subscribe button, click the thumbs up and the notification bell. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below or join the Twitter or Discord channel. Till next time, I'll catch you later.